Let us now read the word of God from Acts 21, beginning in verse 37. It is written. As Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the tribune, may I say something to you? And he said, do you know Greek? Are you not the Egyptian then who recently stirred up a revolt and led the 4,000 men of the assassins out into the wilderness? Paul replied, I am a Jew from Tarsus and Cilicia, a citizen of no obscure city. I beg you, permit me to speak to the people. And when he had given him permission, Paul, standing on the steps, motioned with his hand to the people. And when there was a great hush, he addressed them in Hebrew language, saying, brothers and fathers, hear the defense that I now make before you. And when they heard that he was addressing them in the Hebrew language, they became even more quiet. And he said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers, being zealous for God as all of you are this day. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering to prison both men and women, as the high priest and the whole council of elders can bear me witness. From them, I received letters to the brothers and I journeyed toward Damascus to take those who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished. As I was on my way and drew near to Damascus about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, rise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all that is appointed for you to do. And since I could not see because the brightness of the light, I was led by the hands by those who were with me and came into Damascus. And one, Ananias, a devout man according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers appointed to you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen and heard. And now why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. When I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in one synagogue after another, I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. And he said to me, go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Let us go to God in prayer. O holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, as I was studying this scripture and seeing Paul had been beaten and arrested and he's standing on these steps outside of the tribe outside of the barracks in which he will be taken and shackled and, and jailed and he asked to give a defense but as i read his defense it was really no defense at all because he didn't respond to any of the charges that were given to him so as i read his words in my head played an old familiar hymn Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Air of salvation, purchase of God. 
the Spirit and washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, was written by one Fanny Crosby who happened to be blind and also managed to write over 8,000 hymns of the Christian faith. Her friends would compose the music and then they would come to Fanny and ask for words. This one was no different. Miss Phoebe Knapp an amateur musician and composer wrote this melody and then she went to her friend Fanny and she played it for her. And when she was there, she said, what does this tune say? Fanny Crosby didn't have to wait weeks or months to come up with what it would say. Rather, she knew instantly. She said, this tune, it it says, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And instantly in that moment, she filled out the rest of the hymn. This is my story. This is my song. And when I read Paul's defense, standing on those steps, beaten and arrested, that's what I hear him saying. I hear him telling his story, telling his conversion, telling of his calling by God. He talks of the persecution of which he led of other faithful Christians. He talks about the grace despite his unworthiness that he received by Jesus Christ himself. All in all, when we see Paul give this first of six defenses before he dies, When he speaks, and he speaks about his life, he points it to Jesus. He points to his unworthiness. He points to his sinfulness. And he points to the fact that none of that kept him from receiving grace. And that he was called to go and tell not just the Jews who were God's chosen people, that he was called to go to all the world, Jews and Gentiles alike. See, we know from reading Acts and going through it this year that Paul never held back from following his calling. He never backed down. And even in the latter years, as he was headed towards Jerusalem and told that he would face this imprisonment, that he would face these sufferings and afflictions, Paul continued on with the blessed assurance that Jesus was his. But he also didn't sugarcoat it. And all along the journey, Paul was singing, this is my story. This is my song. As Paul gives his defense, and it looks like he's trying to sway the crowd with his credentials of being a Pharisee and a Jew to get them on his side, Paul knew the backlash he would receive when he announced to them that he was called by Jesus to leave them in Jerusalem and go to the Gentiles. And in fact, in the scripture, in verse 22, what happens next after he makes this announcement is they all begin shouting once again, this crowd that was hushed and listening to what he had to say upon the mention that he would go and preach grace to the Gentiles. They said, away with him, away with him. And yet, 
Paul continued to proclaim the good news of Jesus for all, even though he knew the backlash he would face. Kevin DeYoung, a pastor in Charlotte, North Carolina, has said recently that there will come a time sooner than we may like when we will have to face, when we will have to make a choice between faithfulness to God and popularity with the world. Many of us are faced with that very choice daily in all facets of our lives. For we have been called as Christians to be witness bearers and ambassadors to the good news and the love of Jesus Christ for his glory to all the world to the very ends. You see, Paul doesn't really give a defense of himself. Paul doesn't really mind what happens to him in this life. Paul was going to use every minute he had to tell of the glory of God. And so he tells his story. His story of that grace and the salvation through Jesus. It's not for some, but for all. And so we look at Paul and we see him and we say, what a a bold man, what a man of great courage in the face of all kinds of adversity to speak of the truth of Jesus. I don't know if I could ever have that kind of courage, that kind of boldness. Wouldn't even know where to go and find it. But the simple truth is that the more time we spend with Jesus, that means in prayer, that means time in God's word, that means time in worship and worshiping together, the more time we will spend in our lives to make Jesus known to do it with boldness. See, I want to say that again. There's this direct correlation with the amount of time we spend as Christians spending it with Jesus in prayer and in his word and in worship with the amount of time we will go and spend in our lives trying to tell others of Jesus. You felt it before. You've left church here on fire before, on fire for God. It could have been a song that moved you, a prayer that moved you. Communion really hit you or you heard from God in the message and you were on fire like never before. And when you went to brunch or lunch or the Jags game or you were out in the community at the supermarket, you were so on fire for God that you told somebody about Jesus or you told them about this amazing church where they can hear about Jesus. Or you've had a day where when you woke up from your sleep that the first thing you did was enter into prayer and reading scripture. And suddenly you notice that the rest of your day it pointed to Jesus. How everything lined up And suddenly that day when you look back was a day in your life that was lived for the glory of God. So here's Paul, beaten, arrested, standing on the steps. And I hear him singing. Blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh, what a foretaste Of glory divine Heir of salvation Purchase of God Born of His Spirit I am washed in His blood This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior All the day long This is my story 
this is my song praising my savior your story? What is your song? May it be Jesus. May it be boldly, unashamedly, Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a glorious day it is that we sing your praises You are ours. What a man of faith Paul was with the courage on those steps to not only speak of his weaknesses and faults, but of your grace, your grace for all the world. Lord, may you give us your spirit so that as we walk out of this place, the steps of the days ahead will lead to moments in which we daily tell our story and sing our song that praises your name. For it's in Jesus' great name that we pray. Amen.